What is up, people? We are back at it once again, doing what we do, making videos. Today, I want to dive into a bit more of those new node features that we learned about in the live stream. Those being the policies and the happiness status. But before we get started, there are still 79.1% of you watching these videos who aren't subscribed. And I know you like Ashes of Creation content at this point, so subscribe. Let's bring that number up and let's hit 10K subscribers by the end of the year. So, for those of you who don't know, in the August livestream, Intrepid informed us of this new thing called policies. Policies are like these, Steven kind of described them as like slotted cards. So you have so many slots in a node, and you can take these policies and you can apply them to the slots, really customizing your node. Giving you unique perks that you may not have in another node, and making it more enticing to become a citizen of that node that you're looking at, or adventure on to find one that's more fitting to you and your playstyle. The way these policies work is that the mayor of the node is able to propose these policies, and then the citizens of that node will be able to vote on them. These votes seem to be able to range from anywhere from one hour to 24 hours, most of them around the 24 hour mark, but I guess the mayors do have emergency power that they can channel to do certain things. So essentially, you could cast a policy vote that only lasts an hour if you use your emergency power, and so like the majority of the server could miss it and you could sneak it by, but then this could create some tension between you and the citizens as the mayor, adding a whole new dynamic to it. We don't really know too much detail on how these emergency powers will work yet, but it's kind of a cool thought. It makes it more political, it makes the mayor feel more important, and potentially allowing them to be really shitty mayors. We did see some examples of these policies as well in the live stream whether these are set in stone or not they're probably not because we're still in the alpha stages and they could change but we have the renkai honor bound policy where all node to node reputation changes are increased by five percent we then have asylum which grants instant citizenship for refugees of a fallen node this one is actually pretty cool. If a neighboring node was once sieged, you can now invite them into your node to really build up that population, gaining more taxes for the node and all this stuff so you can further upgrade the node. And this would be especially beneficial if you originally have a smaller populated node with less citizens, because then all of a sudden you're making it a bit more enticing for these citizens of another node to come visit you and live there forever. This is a big deal because normally citizenship is granted through player housing and you can only claim citizenship of one node at a time. So you don't have to buy a house, you can still be a citizen. We then have Great Harvest, which increases gathering speed within the node zone of influence by 5%. This one would be great for your node knowing if a certain season is coming up and those resources that are out there are about to disappear for three more weeks until the season cycle completes. That way citizens of this node can go out and quickly gather this stuff and hopefully hold them through to these seasons, perhaps even preventing prices from skyrocketing during the off seasons. This one would be especially beneficial, I think, in economic nodes where you know you're very economy based, you know, you want people to be able to come and buy and sell stuff because that's how the node makes its money. That's how you flourish. You then have the Kalar industry, which node construction and upgrade speed is 10% faster, which this is great because you can now build things a lot quicker than you could previously if you slotted in one of these cards. Another card that was talked about is using a policy to implement martial law, which could essentially put a more military presence within that node, perhaps to prepare yourself for a war or some other event that you might want all of these extra guards around for. Honestly, it's a pretty cool system overall. What allows you to unlock different policies and place them in the node is something called happiness. When I say happiness, I instantly think of the civilization games with this, where your city has a happiness meter and that could greatly impact your city in civilization. I know Steven plays civilization too. Wouldn't surprise me if that's where he got some of this inspiration from, but the way happiness works is it allows for certain policies to be placed based on the level of happiness. So the happier your citizens are, potentially the better the policies, whereas the more miserable your citizens are, then you can place things like the martial law one, which will probably just upset your citizens more, especially if this shuts down certain vendors and stuff. 
Happiness can be gained for the node through various achievements, story arcs, certain bosses killed, and citizen numbers. So the players have a pretty good control over this happiness meter. And if the happiness is depleting, maybe you want to gather up your guild if you're citizens of this node and go out and take out a few bosses to bump this up. The only one that seems to be not as player driven is story arcs. We don't really know how these are going to work for Ashes of Creation yet, though. Maybe once a certain amount of people complete a story for the node, then you count this arc as complete completed or maybe one person has to complete it I don't really know how it's gonna work yet but it's still a cool thing to do because again you have control over the node these policies in the long run will add even more customization for your nodes like I said allowing to alter things such as culture building types social organizations and religion my only concern with this program though is is it taking nodes a step too far and making them more complicated that's the thing with ashes of creation is it has so much content and I think of Eventually, it's going to get to a point where it has too much content for launch. Some of the things I think should be added down the road through expansions and DLC and monthly content updates, so we're not overwhelming everybody at once when they're jumping in and being like, oh my god, there are six bajillion things to do, which one do I do first? That is a very possible thing. You don't hear about too much content that often, but if there's so much content that everybody's doing different things, it's going to be hard for these nodes to progress in a way that you actually want want them to. Obviously, we're not going to be able to see how these systems actually work, though, until Alpha 2 and beyond, as we haven't actually seen them working in the game. And Alpha 2 is not going to be the full map. You're not going to have 10,000 players in that server. So it's really going to be interesting to see how this stuff plays out and how Intrepid plans to implement it. But we already know that Intrepid is very heavily based around player feedback. So if something doesn't work or the players don't think it's working during Alpha testing, they will probably go back and revisit it again, which is great because it gives the potential to make this game even more epic. Anyways, what are your thoughts on policies and happiness in Ashes of Creation? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums or buy some cosmetic packs or just, you know, not log into your account again until the game comes out and forget your password and then have to reset your password or just make another account, you know, whatever you guys do. But otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications and stay tuned for a lot more to come.